Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be going over five different trigonometric application problems. While you can find the timestamps here, they're also linked in the description. Each of these word problems are going to be dealing with angle of elevation or angle of depression. In all of these problems, it's really important to understand where the initial horizontal line of sight is. In the sketch to the right, this person's horizontal line of view is indicated right over here. This line over here indicates the path or the distance from this person to this rain cloud. The angle measure formed by these two segments is called our angle of elevation. Drawing an additional line from the cloud down to the ground below, we can create a right triangle. Right here is our right angle. Here I'm going to use theta as a variable for our angle measure. This represents our horizontal distance. Here's our vertical distance. And here's our direct distance from the person to the cloud. Once we can form a right triangle, we can use trigonometric functions like sine, cosine, or tangent to solve word problems. Whenever you have word problems with angle of depression, you have scenarios where you're typically looking down instead of looking up. Here you can see our horizontal line of sight is at the top of our diagram. This segment over here represents the distance between the person and this fire hydrant on the ground. So this right here is our angle of depression. Connecting these with this segment over here, we can create a right triangle. Here's our horizontal distance. Here's our vertical distance. And this over here is going to be our direct distance. Since this triangle is sometimes trickier for people to use, we can try to remember our understanding of parallel lines and transversals. The person's original horizontal line of sight and the ground are parallel to each other. And the direct distance represents a transversal. When two lines are parallel and we have a transversal, we can create alternate interior angles. That just means the angle of depression is congruent down here. If that's the case, you can use the horizontal distance down here and the vertical distance as the height of the building. In some problems, you may find this congruent triangle easier to use. Now let's get into five examples and do some math together. First, we have Josh here in a hot air balloon. We know that Josh is 760 feet above the ground. This line right here represents his initial horizontal line of view. And since the problem says angle of depression, Josh is going to be looking downwards. From here, we're going to draw a line that represents a distance from Josh to Summer. This is our angle of depression, and it's 10 degrees. While Josh's angle of depression is 10 degrees, Summer's angle of elevation is 10 degrees to Josh. Josh's height off the ground is the same distance from Summer to the height of the balloon. In this problem, we're looking to find the distance between the point on the ground under the balloon and Summer over here. Let's call this horizontal distance x. Now that we understand the scenario better, I'm just going to simplify it down to a right triangle. Here's our vertical distance, or 760 feet. Here's our unknown. And here's the initial angle of depression, but the same thing as the angle of elevation from the bottom. Looking from this 10 degrees here, 760 is our opposite, while x is our adjacent. Since we're dealing with the opposite and adjacent, we're going to use the tangent function here. Tangent of any angle is going to be equal to the ratio of the opposite side length to the adjacent side length. Substituting in some values here, we can say tangent of 10 degrees is going to be equal to 760, which is our opposite side, over x, which is our adjacent side. Since we have a fraction on the right side, we can also rewrite the left side as a fraction as well by putting it over 1. Whenever x is in the denominator, these problems are always a little bit more work. A little trick you can use is that you can always flip the numerator and denominator on both sides of the equation. Once x is in the numerator, we can multiply both sides by 760 to solve for x. These 760s are going to cross cancel to make 1. And we can say that x is going to be equal to 760 times 1, which is 760, and 1 times tangent of 10, which is going to be just tangent of 10 degrees. Plugging this into a calculator, we get that x is approximately 4310.17 feet. That represents this horizontal distance here. Let's try another one together. Pause the video and read the question to yourself and try to draw a diagram and set it up. Unpause the video to see if we have the same diagram. Here's my diagram and I'm going to label the parts that I know. The string length is 100 feet long, so that's right over here. We know that he's holding the string from 3 feet off the ground, so I'm going to write that right over here. And we know the angle of elevation is 25 degrees. Since we're being asked for the height off the ground, that's going to be this measurement over here. In order to find that entire height, we're going to have to find the vertical distance from the height of Dave's hand to the height of the kite. We're going to call that x here. The height off the ground is going to be represented by the expression x plus 3. Simplifying our triangle a bit, here's our right angle, here's our 100 feet of string, this is going to be our angle of elevation, or 25 degrees, and this side is going to be x. Coming from this angle of 25 degrees here, 
x is our opposite side length, and 100 is our hypotenuse. The trig function we're going to use here is sine. Sine of any angle of a right triangle is going to be equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Substituting in, we can say sine of 25 degrees is going to be equal to x over 100. We like when our unknown is in a numerator because we can just multiply both sides by 100 to solve for it. Here these 100s are going to cross cancel, and we can say that x is equal to 100 times sine of 25 degrees. Plugged into a calculator, x is roughly 42.26. Since the direction stayed around to the nearest foot, we're going to round this to 42 feet. While we found the value of x, we still have to plug it in here to find the total height. The total height is going to be equal to the 42 feet plus the 3 feet initially off the ground, which is a total height of about 45 feet. This would be our final answer. This right here represents a total height of the kite from the ground. Since we know we have a 100 foot building here, I'm going to label that right over here to the left, and that's going to be the same vertical distance over here to the right. And here's Isabel and Sophie. This is Sophie's original location, and the angle of depression is 15 degrees. Due to alternate interior angles, this angle is also 15 degrees. Let's simplify this triangle a little bit here. Here's 15 degrees, here's our height of 100 feet, and this is going to be our horizontal distance that we don't know. Again, this represents Sophie's original location. Since the angle of depression increased to 33 degrees, we know that Sophie got closer to Isabel. This angle over here is also 33 degrees. Let's look at this triangle created by the new location. Here's Sophie's new location. This is the same height of the building of 100 feet, and our angle here is going to be 33 degrees. Since Sophie is now closer to the building, I'm going to use a new variable to represent the horizontal distance. Let's call it y. To find Sophie's original distance, we can say tangent of 15 degrees is going to be equal to 100 over x. Since it's easier to solve these problems when our unknown is in a numerator, I'm going to flip this upside down. So we have 1 over tangent of 15 is equal to x over 100. To solve for the horizontal distance, we can multiply both sides by 100. These 100s here will cross cancel, and we'll get here that x is equal to 100 over tangent of 15. This horizontal distance is about 373.21 meters. For Sophie's new location, we can say tangent of 33 degrees is going to be equal to 100 over y. Flipping these, we can say 1 over tangent of 33 degrees is equal to y over 100. To solve for y, we're going to multiply both sides by 100. Cross canceling these 100s, we can say y is equal to 100 over tangent of 33 degrees. Put into a calculator, we get that y is approximately 153.99 meters. Since we know that Sophie's original distance was 373.21 meters, and her new distance was 153.99 meters, we can subtract those two distances to find the distance that she traveled. Sophie's change in distance is going to be equal to her original distance minus her new distance. Turns out, Sophie traveled about 219.22 meters. Let's try another one here. Pause the video and do it on your own, and unpause it to see how you did. So here's my diagram. Here's Karen, and here's the giant harp in the room. Here we can see she's 24 feet away from the harp. This measurement here represents the height of the harp, while this represents the height of the wall. 31 degrees represents the angle of elevation to the top of the harp, and 42 degrees represents the angle of elevation to the top of the wall. Let's look at one triangle at a time. Simplifying this yellow triangle down, we have a 90 degree angle here. We have an angle of elevation of 31 degrees, and we have the horizontal distance of 24, and that's called the height of the harp x here. And I'll label that as x over here as well. Now let's simplify the purple triangle. Here we have our right angle, we have our angle of elevation of 42 degrees. This is still going to be 24 because they're the same distance away, and we'll call the height of the wall, we'll call that y. I'm going to label that right over here as well. Since the question is asking us to find the distance between the top of the wall and the top of the harp, we can take y and subtract x to figure this out. Let's call the space between the top of the wall and the top of the harp d. In order to find this distance, we're going to take the entire height of the wall, or y, and subtract the height of the harp, or x. Let's find x and y now, and then solve for d. For this yellow triangle, we can start off by saying tangent of 31 degrees is going to be equal to x over 24. Multiplying both sides by 24, we can solve for x. These 24s will cross cancel, and we can say that x is equal to 24 times tangent of 31 degrees. The height of the harp is about 14.42 feet tall. To find the height of the wall here, we can say tangent of 42 degrees is going to be equal to y over 24. To solve for y, we're going to multiply both sides by 24. 
These 24s will cross cancel over here, leaving us with y is equal to 24 times tangent of 42 degrees. The height of the room is approximately 21.61 feet. Now let's substitute these values in. The empty space between the top of the harp and the ceiling is going to be equal to 21.61 minus 14.42. And that's how much space is between the top of the harp and the top of the wall. And here's the fifth and final example. Pause the video and try to draw the diagram and give the problem a try for yourself. Unpause when ready to go over it together. Here's the diagram that I drew. Here we have Seth originally, and after he moved a thousand feet closer to the mountain, here he is now. This is the peak of Mount Luke, and I'm representing that height with the variable h. While 30 degrees was Seth's original angle of elevation, after he walked a thousand feet closer to Mount Luke, his angle of elevation increased to 35 degrees. Since we only know part of the horizontal length is a thousand feet, let's call the rest of it x feet. Let's look at the triangle formed by Seth's original location. Here we have a 90 degree angle, 30 degrees is the angle of elevation here, the height of the mountain is going to be h, and the entire horizontal length here is going to be 1000 plus x. From this, we can write the equation that tangent of 30 degrees is going to be equal to h divided by 1000 plus x. Since we're solving for the height, let's try to get h alone. To isolate h, we can multiply both sides of the equation by 1000 plus x. Here the 1000 plus x will cross cancel, and we can write h is equal to 1000 plus x times tangent of 30 degrees. This is what we've learned from our first right triangle. Now let's look at the right triangle formed when Seth got closer to Mount Luke. Here's our right angle. 35 degrees is our angle of elevation. This represents our height, and x represents our horizontal distance. From here, we could say that tangent of 35 degrees is equal to h over x. Just like the triangle above, let's isolate h. To do that, we can multiply both sides by x, and that way these x's cross cancel. Here we're going to get that h, or the height, is going to be equal to x times tangent of 35 degrees. And this is what we found from our second right triangle. Since our goal is to find the height of Mount Luke, we need to use these two equations we have and solve for h. Since h is equal to this, and h is equal to this, we can use substitution to set them equal to each other. After substitution, here you can see our new equation. Distributing this 1000, we're going to get 1000 times tangent of 30 degrees. And distributing this x, we're going to get plus x times tangent of 30 degrees. This is still equal to x times tangent of 35 degrees. While there's a lot going on, try to stay focused on the fact there's only one variable, which is x, and we need to solve for it. Here we're going to subtract x times tangent of 30 degrees from both sides, so we can combine the x's all on the right side. Here you can see that our x's are now both on the right side. Since both terms have x on the right side, we can factor out an x and write x times the quantity of tangent of 35 degrees minus tangent of 30 degrees. This is still equal to 1000 times tangent of 30 degrees on the left side. Now that we finally only have one x, let's isolate it by dividing both sides. To isolate x, we divide both sides by tangent of 35 degrees minus tangent of 30 degrees. While this is what x is equal to exactly, we can plug this into a calculator to get that x is approximately equal to 4699.358 feet. Now that we found x, we can substitute it into either one of these equations to solve for the height of Mount Luke. Since the lower equation is a little simpler, I'm going to use that one. Substituting in, we're going to get that h is equal to 4699.358 multiplied by tangent of 35 degrees. Finally, we figured out the height of Mount Luke, which is about 3290.536 feet tall. If you found this video useful, please consider liking or subscribing. Keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.